in any capacity to see the plane. How exciting. But first, me. This, uh, I'm going to read a brand new story tonight. Only Deborah has heard it previously. And there's a sound effect to start it off. It might or might not work, but we've tried. Now that was it. Did you hear that? Do you want it again? Might have deleted it, wouldn't it? <laughs> Did you hear that? Right. That was the sound effect to start this story. Okay. Arnold Lane had a strange hobby collecting clothes. It was an affectation, a contrivance which had got out of hand. The 60s may have been swinging, but Mr. and Mrs. Lane. Re- oh, wait a minute. This story is dedicated to anyone here tonight who might be called Arnold. I don't know if there is anyone that, you know, is quite an There might be an Arnold here tonight, right? The 60s may have been swinging, but Mr. and Mrs. Lane remain blissfully unaware. In their late 30s, they belong to a slightly earlier generation, with the black and white minstrel show and the light classics of Mantovani more their cup of tea. Despite Arnold already being an, an outmoded name, it was an obvious choice for his parents, as both of their fathers, and thus the baby's grandfathers, shared the name of Arnold. A week after the christening, unbeknownst to Mr and Mrs Lane, Pink Floyd released their debut single. He was a happy, quiet child, the ennui caused by raised eyebrows and nudge, nudge, wink, wink, collect clothes, do we, came later, much later. Throughout his school days, young Arnold had to stave off bullying by barking in the manner of DJ Tony Blackburn's dog, who was also called Arnold, on a daily basis. No sooner had his peers grown out of this joke, oh, after about a dozen years or so, than he began meeting people in daily life and at parties who would nod their head in a curious way and ask if he had a strange hobby or how were his neighbours' washing lines. And one can only take so much of other men's idiocy, can't one? The life-changing moment was a matter of happenstance, appropriately enough, as his whole life had thus far been orchestrated to the tune of his parents, indeed his great-grandparents' choice of Christian name for their offspring. Some bird at a party could... Oh, and there's a, a bit of blue language in this. Uh, I'll try and tell you that. Yeah, that's it. Block your ears. Thank you. You, you don't look. And you. Can I say? Can I say? Can I say it's, right. Okay. Some burke at a party who could barely string two words together, drunk on lager and blackcurrant, managed to blur into Arnold's face, splashing him with tiny molecules of spit as he did so. Collect cloves, do ya? It wasn't pre-planned, he just summoned some inner resilience that he didn't know he possessed and enunciated as crisply and clearly as he could. Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> In a way it worked. The thug responded with, Don't come fucking clever with me, you can. <laughs> and staggered off. You can unblock your ears now. There aren't any more profanities in this one. (laughs) It was the last that Arnold saw of him, not that he hung around at the party for too much longer. In a spirit of, I'll show him. The following day, he went to Sainsbury's and bought a little jar of Schwartz clothes and a similar jar of the supermarket's own brand. He popped around the corner to Fine Fair and bought a little tub of clothes in their distinctive yellow and black livery. And so it started. The next time he got asked, he could look them in the face and state that, as a matter of fact, I do, or, funny you should say that, or, how on earth could you have possibly guessed? That was a quarter of a century ago. His collection is now pushing close on 200 different pots, jars, cartons and packets of clothes. Every time a particular brand changes its packaging, he adds another to his collection. All unopened. 
He's never had occasion to use one, being that he doesn't bake cakes, cook curries, or stick them into Seville oranges to make dainty pomanders. He realises he's got a foolish, irrational hobby, but every time he feels he should call a halt to this mania, he looks at the platoon of boxes, cartons and jars standing smartly on 